Good afternoon. How is everybody today? Hope you are all doing really, really well. Uh, usual thing. Good afternoon. How is everyone? And I didn't get a chance to check the sound levels. So before we go any further, in the little bit of a chat box there to your right, just please just let, give me a thumbs up if you can hear myself and also if you can hear the lovely Louise. Can you hear me? Bit more though? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> a lady of many words. <laughs> good. So I hope everyone's having a lovely day. We've had and a, clear. Good, good, good. Thank you. Everybody, good. thanks. We've had a bit of a cold snap here, haven't we, over the last... Uh, well, today has been a cold Today's snap been anyway. Today's been cold again, yeah. Yes. Good. All looking good. Thank you very much indeed. So I hope you all had a lovely weekend. We had a lovely weekend, didn't we, Lou? We did, yeah. We had, we had family up and... We had a nice weekend. Went to see your dad, didn't we? Yes, went to see him. <laughs> went to see my father. Um, yeah, and uh, you just saw on the preview then, yes, we've released our new uh, podcast. They went live, I think it was last night, but I just broadcast it and let everyone know today. So it's all about handling complaints. Yes. It's quite a shocking one, isn't it, really? Do you think it's... Oh, I don't like listening to them, only because, believe it or not, I don't like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know it's hard oh, to I believe. I love the sound of my it's own voice. It's hard to believe. But, um, yeah, so I do listen to it because you make me listen to it to check it and then just to make I don't sure, listen to them again. Just to yeah. make sure it's all okay. So if you haven't listened to that um, already, just go onto your favourite podcast player, whether it be Spotify or Google or... Apple or Deezer or Anchor or all the myriad of Comcast. On it's on them all. Go and check them out. Jewelry Talks at the Bench. And I'll put that on my little board by here. J W E L L E. Jewelry. It's us talking about how we handle how we handle complaints, really, isn't it? This one, yes. Mm. Yes. Um, Not that we get huge amounts of complaints, obviously. <laughs> but, but it's always handy. It's inevitable, isn't it? It's part of life. You have to be able to handle and manage complaints or concerns. Or maybe even, hopefully, stop concerns becoming complaints. Yes, and we talk about that, the three C's, don't we? Yes. <laughs> Is it comments, concerns and complaints? Comments, concerns so and complaints. Today, yeah. Oh, you were listening, were you? I didn't remember at the time, but I do remember it now <laughs> when I'm not under pressure. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's so, yeah. And, and so, actually, we, we didn't make things up. It was uh, a complaints that we've had, uh, we rectified, and it's complaints that I've made as well. But we won't go into that today. Yes. <laughs> good. Everyone. Everyone's looking good. So, yeah. So, go along and listen to that. Um, yes, it's uh, Jewelry Talks at the Bench. We did get to the Apple number one spot last week. Top 10 for crafts. We've dropped quite a bit because obviously it's been like three weeks since the last podcast. So fingers crossed, if you all go and watch it, it's <laughs> click on Instagram, click on our stories or on our posts. There's links directly to it as well. So just go and check that out and search for Jewelry Talks at the bench. Give us a follow, give us a, a rating and just leave a little bit of a question. We asked, did you enjoy the word? Not the word, what's it Did you enjoy the podcast? Mm. Claire you enjoyed it. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, it was Claire. a great podcast. Very honest, useful, and funny. <laughs> uh, Jill, Jill enjoyed it. Thought it was good. Not scary. Useful tips. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, I think when you say about complaints, it does sound scary. It does sound horrible. It sounds nasty, doesn't it? What is a complaint? But then it's like we said in the podcast. Complaints are not something to be afraid of or shy away from. Because if somebody's no. coming to you with a complaint or a concern, they want you to make it right and you've mm. got a real opportunity to turn somebody who's potentially complaining into somebody who will go away happy and hopefully yes. come back or even if you do it really well become a raving fan mm. and isn't that isn't that an amazing thing to have happen it is but um yeah it's something to kind of like really you gotta, you gotta get a think, proper handle of it and take ownership of it and you gotta think of it as also feedback positive feedback though it may be negative to what you've done it's a positive way of looking at it because then you can put right what you've done wrong mm. and you can learn from what you've done wrong to make things positive to make your business better absolutely yeah i mean even if there's nothing to be put right you can still learn how to handle a complaint can't experience. you there's something to learn from all of it yeah yeah so mm. we loved it uh, we got quite a few more planned we got a special guest coming on the next one 
I'm not going to say anything, but that will be in a couple I'm of so weeks' time. I'm so excited about the next one. <laughs> but that will be in a couple of weeks' time. So we're really looking forward to that. So, yeah, pop on Jewelry Talks at the bench to your favourite <laughs> podcast player. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a rating. We'd absolutely love you to. Follow us as well to be notified when the next podcast goes up. And thank you very much for everybody who has listened to it so far. Let's see if we can get back up to the Apple podcast to be under craft and yeah. the Spotify well, the next well. one, the one we're planning over the next week to record over the next week is, I know, a, an issue for a lot of jewellers and craftspeople. Yes. Um, but it's not specifically related to it. So I think it'll be a really good one for a lot of people. Mm, it will be. Mm. And I think the majority of the podcast, we are aiming it not necessarily specifically at jewellery. It is to do with crafts in general, really, yeah, isn't it? It's it, just a bit it of It has talking. a wide reach because it's not industry specific as such is it yeah, yeah exactly so we can talk about advertising but that can relate to all different aspects of yeah products. it's all transferable isn't it which is great it is absolutely loved it and don't forget hope you enjoyed last monday's workshop as well we did catches and we've got all these different catches here oh yes louise i've got some catches to show you and some hinges to show you nice one mm -hmm. excellent good 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 so we've got <laughs> we've got the catches i didn't make them other people did yeah <laughs> just putting that out there <laughs> um, yeah so all the emails have gone out today regarding the workshop we've edited it it's up on at the bench there are links there to go to watch the films if you're a member of at the bench paid member of at the bench there are links to the films like the uh several one was i looking at yeah like the little sister catch that we made up that was there the little box catch as well this one here there's films directly to so that guy, the cylinder clasp as well. That's not the cylinder clasp, where is the cylinder? Uh, oh, da, 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 there it is, yeah. So there's the cylinder, sorry, there it is there. So there's the cylinder catch that we did as well. So all, the links to all these films are up on the email that'll be winging its way out to you. <coughs> if you haven't received it by tomorrow, just drop um, Louise at Louise, no, it's not what it's called. Louise, Louise at, at andrewberry.co.uk. Drop Louise a line um, if you don't have it by tomorrow. There's thousands of emails going out today. It should go out today, but if tomorrow you haven't received it, just give Louise at andrewberry.co.uk an email and just say you haven't received it. State what membership you've got so we know what we can do for you. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Let's put all this away. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we had a lovely email, didn't we? today we've had lots of lovely, emails. lovely emails but one of the emails you just brought to my attention was um, this toggle clasp and adding this extra ring on it and she did say that the admission to the workshop was worth that tip alone yeah and i thought that was really nice that, that. was who, who should we credit for that that was was it helena somebody said that they'd done that i can't remember who it was that was somebody's suggestion wasn't it and we what that was yeah no the double link wasn't known. Oh, wasn't it? Sorry. Oh, Sorry, Andrew. Okay. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was. I was, oh, I was saying there are only two books I've ever seen with that type. Oh, that, no, that, that's even closer to me. Oh, that, somebody else it. must have Overhead. given a tip in. Sorry, this I works. do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking credit for it, but I've only ever seen two books do a double loop and toggle clasp. So yeah, so we covered that on the workshop. If you want to go and check out the workshop, go on at the bench. It's there. If you want to buy the workshop, again, go on at the bench.com, click on workshops, click on whatever workshop you want to buy. You can still buy the workshop. It's £15, which is roughly about about $18. Absolutely amazing value considering these workshops are about two and a half, two and three quarters, over three hours long for £15 absolute bargain if you ask me now might be a good time for me to show you something really cool yes please Louise. what do you have there Maria? i have got so after after the workshop yes oh see i had this this computer does things that it shouldn't do um after the workshop shelly had a go at making a hinge her mm -hmm. first hinge um and this amazing hinge wait i'm not doing anything this amazing hinge was the result. Ta-da! Excellent. Uh, so yeah, uh, Shelley said, I'm quite proud of myself. Just made this in brass. All thanks to your Hinge Master class. Yep. It's not perfect. Well, it, it looks, looks perfect to me. It's pretty good to me, doesn't it's, it? I don't even know how you could better that. Mm, it's very good, isn't um, it? It's the first Hinge I've ever, ever. attempted. Look at that. Um, been too scared to... <coughs> 
it up before. <laughs> <laughs> um, how amazing is that? How it cool. is good. That is so I neat. Absolutely love that. And it works, and it's yeah, absolutely amazing. So that was from our hinges workshop, and yes. last week was the continuation was the catches. Workshop. And I think yeah. I saw Shelley say she's made a sister. Yes, a brass, a little brass sister catch as well. How cool is that? Um, really good. Love that. Yeah. Would you like to see another one? Go on, very quickly. Okay. Um, I didn't mean that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going right. as fast as I can. <laughs> um, okay, so Ingrid also got in touch with me in the last week or two. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What? I'm on you. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... Yes, Ingrid has also done some clasps and hinges a little while back before the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, I think these might come out in the wrong order now, but I will just... Um, okay, go. Um, so again, uh, let's see. That's a gorgeous little box. We love that. I know, we? I absolutely. I think that's such a sweet little box. And I love this gallery here. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, really cool gallery. So Ingrid said they're far from perfect. Well, I think they're... They're lovely. lovely. They are really good. I'm, I'm a hobby jeweller. Um, the box clasp, I'm pretty happy with. So the box clasp, oh, that's just the, the box that's from the another box. view. Cool. The box clasp, awesome. uh, she said, I'm pretty happy with. It makes a nice click closing. Nice. Fabulous. Um, yeah, how wonderful. Um, so this is the, the oval lock. I had a hard time making the 10. Mm. Probably made at least five before I managed to make the one that works. This was cool. I love yeah, this. Yeah, it's really cool, the isn't it? The of the tongue and the box. I love that. But I like the fact that she kept doing it until it worked and didn't give up. Mm. How amazing. Totally. But yeah, that is so sweet, So we love that. It? Excellent. Thank you very much yeah. for those pictures. Well done, guys. Thank you, Sherry, for that. Really good. Thank you for showing us that. But the box as well, the box clasp was Ingrid's first try as well. Amazing. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's what happens when you get good instruction. She did that before the masterclass, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> oh, right. oh, I'm in trouble later. Yeah, right. Being naughty today, I'll behave. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> What's anything else to? to, to, okay. to yeah, we're on you. Yeah, we're good, yeah. are we? Yep. Yeah. Is that it? I think that's all I got for now. Yeah. For now, excellent. Yeah, aren't they good. wonderful? All right. Should we go back and start our Q and A? Yeah. Please do. I give you I give a few seconds to catch up on your questions. Yes, you got one ready. Got one ready. Wow. So it's Monday, the sixth of February. 2023, 4 p.m., quarter past four. Uh, time for our latest Q&A. So, Louise, let's have our first question, my dear. Yes. Um, Tanya, hiya, Tanya. Um, what's the best way to practice measuring? I've, I've sawed out a shape, but, but four of them are different sizes. Uh, would it be my sawing isn't too good? All of them are different sizes. Ooh. Would it be sawing? Oh, bless. Oh. So, what I would do, I would, first of all, I would get my uh, peg, and as you can see, this peg was sloping, yep. And so if you're sawing, this way isn't so bad, but as soon as you start to turn, if you say you want to turn or you turn the metal, because it's sloping, you're not going to get a true representation across. If you've got, say, two, three or four pieces of metal stacked on top, glue them all together. If you use the sloping peg, you're never going to get them all right because you're looking at the top one where your design is, but then as you turn the metal, the underneath, because it's sloping, is never going to be the same size as the top. So a, a trick would be would be to get your peg and I've got a bit of silver one there, so let's just tap it off there, and turn it over. So your peg is parallel. So your peg now is 90 degrees. Yep, so it's coming straight at you. And then when you're sawing, you've got to make sure that your blade is completely vertical. If you have it at an angle forwards this way, and then you try and turn the metal, because your blade is at an angle, the top piece of metal would cut by here, but the bottom piece of metal will cut by there. So it's always going to be not exactly the right size. So peg completely perpendicular or parallel to the floor, 90 degrees, and make sure that your piercing saw is completely vertical. Perhaps if you had your phone by the side of you by here, um, just basically not videoing, but have the camera facing your, um, your blade, you may be able to find it easier to see if that blade is vertical or not. 
if the foam's on the side, so you can see exactly what's what. If as soon as that blade starts to go at a funny angle, they're not going to be the same size. So that would be my tip to make sure everything is going to be the same size, or cut one that you exactly have it the perfect shape for and use that one to then put onto your piece of metal and draw around it. Or keep that one because then the next shape you use that same one to transfer onto the next bit of metal to draw around. Keep that one, next bit of metal, put that upon and you draw around it. So that would be the other way. Don't basically have one, trace it, and then use that one that you've just cut out as the master for the next one and so forth because any deviation in each one is going to get exaggerated. So if you are making multiple pieces, either make one out of brass and use that brass piece to draw around or, as I said, stack them on top, stick them together with super glue or um, Copydex water-based adhesive or I don't like to use double-sided tape because the tape is really gummy so I would, I would not advise you with double-sided tape but do it that way. Peg at 90 degrees to you, perpendicular, parallel to the floor and make sure you blaze up right. Yes, Lou. Let's have another question. Uh, okay. Uh, Anthony is going to a, an anodized aluminium workshop this weekend. Ooh, nice. In Ch Ch Chichester. Oh, nice. What's that? What? Anodized. It's where they make different colours on the aluminium. Oh. Really fashionable and trendy back in the 80s. So like a kind of rainbowy. Yeah. Like the... The new charms, the, that sort of effect. I know it's not going to look like that, yeah, but that's, they, I can picture it in my mind's eye They now. pass electrical current through it, through a solution. And the mm. longer the, the item is in the solution, the different colour it goes. Ooh. So if you had, this, had, had to, if you had the item in the solution, passed a current through it, almost like electroplating, and then pulled the piece out, you would get a graduated rainbow effect, anodized aluminium. It's lush. Good. You can do the same with titanium as well. Can you? As I used to do back in, I was in the uni, yes. Mm, okay. <clears throat> My hours spent in the workshop never wasted. <laughs> Didn't doubt that for a minute. Sad how I Okay, uh, Scrap Over Engineering, hello. I have something which looks nice on thin round leather lace. Is there some way to make a clasp for it, a clasp for it myself, instead of just making a knot in the lace? Yeah, we had a, a quick talk about this, didn't we? In the workshop, we had the uh, the sister hook clasp, which was just like this. So that was the sister hook clasp. And what we suggested that you do is loop your leather around one end here and make a loop on the other. So you've got <coughs> the leather coming along and it would loop around like that. So here's your leather like that there okay and then perhaps you can get those is it can you get the little um little springs that enable you can open the springs to slide it over the leather so you've got like that so that then is the leather going in and this is the leather coming out so you have like spring like that that would then go through your sister hook so you've got uh, like that there. So you'd have this end, say up this end here, going through. You'd make sure this loop by here was nice and tight. And then you'd have that exactly the same on the other side here. And that then would go through your sister hook here. I think that'd be the nice, easiest, simplest way of using the leather with a, not a sister hook, um, an S hook like that. Nice and simple. Yes, Lou. Good. Um, Rebecca, hello, hi. I have followed your tutorial to make a half eternity ring with five three mil stones. Yep. I'm struggling to set the stones and would love any advice on where I might have gone wrong. Without actually seeing what you've done wrong, it's very hard to tell Can you. Can you send me some photos, lovely? And then... Yeah. But the, the trick is, and what I've always found, the trick is to make sure that the stones are lower than what you actually think they need to be. So you've got your ET that does that. It's a bit of a funny shaped ET, isn't it? So on the top, you have got your holes. And then what you've done, you've got, uh, you passed a burr through here, a burr through here. So you've got this shape and you passed a burr through there. So you've got, almost this sort of idea 
Yep, I hope that's what you're implying, yeah, that does that. Does that make sense? So this is where the stones go, I'm trying to lean over here. So you've got to set these stones really low. So they've really got to be low. You can't have them up here because what you've got to realize is the metal that you've got here to split your claws here, 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 and here to push over. This metal has to be higher than the stone itself. So really, the stone should be pretty much level with your metal to allow for the metal on the side here to be pushed over onto the stone. And these stones come down like this, this way here. You've got to set them low. So there's enough metal. If you don't, when you try and push your little splitter down here to push the metal over in this direction, there's not going to be enough metal above the girdle of the stone to push over. So that is definitely what I would advise you to do. And if you send um, some pictures to Louise, gladly have a look for you and, and see where you're going wrong. And again, the trick is making sure that you've got the stones just when you lay out no, 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 this is the thing when you lay out your pattern on a half eternity when you lay out the pattern if you've got three mil stones what you don't want to do is put a mark and then put a mark three mil and put three mil and put three mil you don't want to do that way because as soon as you start to set the stones in the stones because the circumference here is bigger than the circumference down here and what's going to happen? Your three mil stones are going to be overlapping. So you have to allow about a tenth or a fifth of a millimetre bigger between the stones on the top here. So when they're set lower, the girdles will be a lot closer because the circumference here is smaller. So three mil out here, if you bring that circumference you know, right down here, three mil is going to be down here. So does that make sense? So your three mil is going to be smaller. So this distance here, once the stone is set, the girdle is set here, has to be three. But as you can see, the further you go out, the bigger this distance has to be as well. So even though you may put the space in for three mil stones, you've got to do it slightly bigger to allow for this pie shape, this circumference coming closer. Yes, Louise. Um, I forgot to show you these. Come on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There, sorry, I forgot to show you these. These are from Shelley as well. Oh, yes. How lush are they? She's cracking on with her class, she isn't she? She really is, isn't she? And she's yeah. doing amazing. Very good. Yeah, love them. Nice one, very good. Alan Thompson's first Q&A here. Thank Hello, you, Alan. Alan. Welcome. Thank you very much, Alan. But yeah, yeah. very good. I love it, Shelley. Yeah, I knew there was more. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely beautiful. Love it to bits. Good, good. Um, right. I think I've missed the question. Did Maybe. I miss a question? Don't um, there was a question about sparkly putting something in the rolling mill. I saw do that on my board. I'll come back to that. <coughs> okay. Oh, yep. no, perhaps yep. we read it. Um, Salty Meme Smith is uh, saying, barrel versus magnetic tumbler, what's better? How do you stop fine chains from tangling in the tumbler? Uh, you, for start, get a piece of wire, coat hanger, make it into something, make it into that sort of shape. Yep. That's, this is a bit, a bit of coat hanger, wire, and just wrap your chains around. You can, perhaps you need to have perhaps two different sizes of that. So you've got your 16 inch, your 18 inch chains, that sort of thing, and just pass your chains in around that. And that's going to stop them tangling because it's being held taut. Uh, which would I have, barrel or magnetic? Personally, um, neither because you should be polishing by hand. Barrel polishing does not replace polishing by hand. It, 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 it works, but personally, you get a better polish if you polish by hand, even if it's just a simple 
flex shaft or a Dremel, or if you can just get an old washing machine motor, fasten that to your bench. You can get a tapered spindle that goes on it and you can have the bench mounted polishing motor, which is far, far superior. I don't care what anybody says, it's far superior than a barrel polisher, far superior than a magnetic polisher. It's cheaper if you want to polish up nice professional looking pieces, don't have a barrel polisher, don't have a magnetic polisher, but learn to polish by hand. You will get far better results. But which one would you have? Again, it depends upon what type of pieces you want to polish. If, like us, you want to polish up, say, rings with settings, cluster settings, tiny little areas that you cannot get into, that you can't get in with a, with a mop or with brushes, anything like that, a magnetic polisher is best because the pins are really, really fine. If you've just simply got rings and bezel settings and chunky rings with no fine detail, well then a barrel polisher is okay. Why? Because a barrel polisher the media in a barrel polisher is, uh, is bigger. You have satellites that look just like that. You have satellites, you have balls, you have sausage shaped you know, little balls. All these different types of media are in a barrel polisher and they all have an effect. This will burnish. These will burnish in smaller areas. This will get quite close because the edges here are slightly rounded, but that's just general, general, like this going over the pieces, okay? Like that, smearing themselves all over your bits of metal. <laughs> but, but if you have a pin polisher, they're little needles and they're like 0 0.3, 0 0.5 of a millimeter and the buggers are sharp, they're very sharp, so you have to have a magnetic polisher and run it just to dent those pins. But they are pins. They will get all oh, into little fiddly little areas in between the settings and all that sort of thing. If you've got a lovely, large, smooth area, these are likely to mark it, okay? Because they're thin, they're like this, they're like this onto the surface. But if you just want a general burnish like this, a, mag a, a, a tumbler would be just right. But if you want to get into all the little nooks and crannies like that, a magnetic polisher is best. But learn to do it by yourself with the motors, with the mops, with the dipping. We've got loads of Eve polishers, Eve felts, we've got Eve uh, cylinders, we've got Eve flex three mil points, we've got Everflex. We've got them all on our store. So store dot at the bench dot com or just go to at the bench dot store. We sell all the different products there that you can actually use and do it by hand. You get far superior results. Yes, Louise. OK, good. I have recovered the question that I <laughs> lost. Sorry. Sorry, Helena. Yes, it is. Could I draw down textured round wire and still keep the sparkly texture? Um, uh, the sparkly round wire is one mil. I need um, 0.8 for ear wires would use the draw plate, would use the draw plate. No, I think if you're gonna pull it down, it's gonna pull it and any texture that's on the wire is gonna be smoothed out because your draw plate has a cross section that does that, all right? Your bit of metal is here that's slightly bigger than the hole and if you've got little, little I'm not quite sure when you say sparkly, do you mean like little like diamond cut? Like that little diamond cut texture all over. Okay, so first of all, you've got to make a, 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 a taper on it. So you made your taper, and the taper's just sticking out by here now. Yep, so here's your metal, here's your metal here, and you've got your texture by here. Blah, 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 blah. This is all your texture. Yep, as soon as you start to pull it through, what's going to happen? It's going to be pushing, it's going to be. Oh, you hurt your, hurt your elbow. It's it's my elbow. Uh, the, 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 the draw plate is going to be pushing. So say you've got a bit of clay, you stick your fingers in your clay like that and then you pass your hand, your palm gently over the top of this. What's going to happen is those little dents you put in with your fingers are going to be pushed out and that's what's going to happen. So you're not going to be able to preserve that texture by taking it through a draw plate or even if you try to roll it, you're going to flatten that texture. So I'm afraid the answer is no. 
sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Is there anything that... No. There's no way, is there? No. Um, it's just going to just sort either way. You can't do it. You can't take it down. It's oh. going to uh, ruin the texture. Yes. Okay. There we are. Sorry, it's not better. <laughs> okay. um, Sorry. That's okay. Uh, Ruth would like to know, if you melt a customer's gold to remodel, how do you ensure its hallmark quality after you have remodeled? You have to rely upon the hallmark that is on it prior to melting it down. Now, you do have to be very careful with how you melt a customer's jewelry down in the sense of, and this has happened to us, we've done exactly this. If, it, if you have a high carat metal, it's, it, it is a lot more difficult to do. So we, i give you a little scenario. We had some 22 carat wedding rings in. We knew they were 22 carat because the hallmark said 916, 22 carat. We thought, brilliant, melt them down, roll them out into the right section. We used 22 carat solder and we soldered the rings, sent them off to assay and they came back not assay quality it, they would not be they were they were they were at least nine carat they were at least 18 carats but they were only a couple of percentages less than 22 carats they would not hallmark it what we hadn't done we hadn't looked for the solder joint that was in the band and this is really really important if you've got any of gold that you want to melt down if you're trying to melt down chain, you've got a lot of solder in it. You can't go through cutting every little piece of solder out. So, for argument's sake, if you were melting down some nine carat, some nine carat chain, and you had to send that off to the assay office, first of all, warn the customer that you are not responsible for the assay mark that goes on it. Because nowadays, the testing process is far more mathematical than what it ever used to be. It, it's, it can only be like a half a percent less than what it should be and they will not hallmark it. In the olden days, they didn't have the, those sort of uh, accurate equipment and perhaps they would have let that through. But nowadays it's far more accurate. So if you've got some gold and the customer says, can I have it hallmarked? You have to stress that you will you do your best, but you cannot guarantee what that is going to be once you've melted it down because you have to rely upon the hallmark that's on it. And there may be some discrepancy. There may be a lot of solder within the piece that may lower the quality of it. Now, it depends now upon you. What we sometimes do is add perhaps 10, 20 pounds onto the cost of every single commission we do. Why would we do that? Well, what we do usually is add a little bit, a higher percentage of metal to the melt. So if I'm melting down nine carat, I would perhaps, and say you're melting down, say 20 grams of nine carat, I would add in roughly around about half a gram of 18 carat, whether that be an old bit of scrap that I've got lying around or whether that's a piece of casting grain that you can buy like a half a gram into say a 20 gram melt and the, what that does that will raise that quality of the nine carat a little bit enough for it to be able to be passing through the assay office and get the hallmark applied if there's a lot of solder within the piece if you're melting down rings try and cut through that solder joint to remove the solder then you can melt it all down but i would still add a little bit of higher carat metal into the melt just to raise that quality should anything happen. Because what you don't want to do is make up the piece, send it to the assay office and then go, nah, sorry, it's not the quality, we're not going to hallmark it. Or you send off, say, 18 carat that you've melted down and they say, sorry, it's not 18 carat, it's 17.6 carat. So what do you want us to do? Do you want us to hallmark it 14 carat? Well, you wouldn't because the customer has given you 18 carat so you, they don't want 14 carat back even though it may be slightly less than 18 carat so always add as i said 20 pounds will cover about a half a gram of say 18 carat casting grain so add that to the melt it'll lift it if you've got some 18 carat you get a little bit of 22 carat and add that to the melt is to lift the quality of the metal higher so you can be guaranteed that 
you can have it hallmarked. But we still usually say to the customer, if there's no hallmark on a few pieces, we will say, we will do what we can, but this isn't hallmarked, or this may have you know, a simple uh, you know, 9CT stamped on it if it was prior to 71, 72. Like that, yeah. But that is still no guarantee that that is nine carats. So if you're melting down any gold that has an official hallmark, you know, it says 375, it's got the uh, the anchor or it's got the lion's head, but I'm not going to draw the lion's head. <laughs> if it's got all that within the, the frames, it's got the, you know, you know what I mean? If it's got this, you can be guaranteed that that is what it is, but I would still add a little bit. If any of the gold you're melting down is says that, I would make the customer aware that you cannot guarantee what that metal is going to be. And that's important as well. We were talking about this in the podcast because... It's managing expectations right at the very start, isn't it? Yes. And that could, again, prevent somebody from complaining about something or thinking they have a complaint when they actually don't. Yes. If you just make sure that you have the conversation. Yes, mm. and, and stress and, and usual, you know, you, you this is when we can have And get them to podcast. sign as well or put it in writing if you can. Exactly. Put it on your packet to say X, Y, and Z could happen. And then they, yeah. yeah. You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You trained me well, I obviously. Trained you well. So again, I think mm. we have, have a podcast on taking procedures. Pop that down, Luke. Taking procedures. Taking procedures. Yes, yeah, as Louise said. So anything that you tell the customer, jot down on the packet, make sure it's there, make sure it's on their copy that they have. So there's proof that you've had this conversation. If, if it comes back and it was 9 CT and it doesn't come back as 9 carats, you say, well, I did make you aware at the time that I cannot guarantee that it is. Mm, you covered yourself. You've got you? to cover yourself before anything should happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's only fair to your customer as well, so that, you know that's the yes. main reason. But yeah. so, how did they before the days of? Because now we we have um, X-ray fluorescence analysis, don't we? Yes. For the composition of the metal. Yeah. How did they do it before that? What they used to do, they used to scrape mm. the piece, and they had the pit of piece of metal. Yep. Then I think they wrapped it in lead, and they did something to that. What did they do? <laughs> they did something to they that. Did, they did something to it. They did something to it. And they did something, and I'm not quite sure what they did, but then they tested the metal as a result of whatever they did. And what they used to do... It's a lot more complicated and costly then, isn't it? Than the, I mean, I'm and, sure that the, the, the XRF, is it XRF, XRF machines? Yeah. Are not cheap, are they? But like £30,000. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the best thing about it was, was that then they used to give you little bits of gold back. Did they? Yes. And as soon as London stopped doing that, I changed to Birmingham because they kept giving you gold back. And then there came a time when the XRF machines came well, they popular. Don't take anything and they off, don't do yeah. anything now. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So that is what they used to do. And that then is reason what why. What if they took it a bit off and it put it just under weight? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be annoying? <laughs> that would be actually, yeah, that'd be very good. So that is how they did it, and that's the reason why it was not that accurate many, many years ago. Oh, and, okay. and the ending of my little story was the 22 carat that came back at like 21.6 carat still wouldn't hallmark it. So I had to have it back. I got a bit of pure gold. Again, I got that wedding ring and I cut through the solder joint. I put a bit of pure gold in with the melt, melting it down, had to remake it, made it up the same, sent it off and it passed. So the moral of the story is cut out as much solder as you can, but add a little bit more of a higher percentage uh, carat gold into it and that the same goes for silver as well mm -hmm. if you melt down a lot of sterling silver have a little bit of fine silver by the side of you and add a little bit of fine silver into the melt again just to bring up the, the finesse of the metal good yes please okay uh claire told her mum about the workshops um, and she's dropped off a bag of broken necklaces but they <laughs> all have broken fish hook clasps what's the best what's best to replace with or should i just buy new fish hooks uh, you mean like the figure of eights? Not figure of eights, you mean like the S, the S hooks, yeah? You mean the, these, these hooks, yeah? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Make some. Practice making them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we did the, um, the calculations from the bookshop about what sort of length of metal you want. Practice them. Go for it. Um, it's cheaper than buying them. Oh, we've got the photos, haven't we, from the workshop? We have, Maria. Yes. If you're on, um, yes, I forgot to send you them because we were talking last week or of the last week. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I've got you on my list here to send you the pictures tomorrow. And anybody else who wants the photos, who was on the workshop, let me know because your little doodles that you did were quite good. Yes. Mm. Okay. 
and, and we're quite helpful. So yeah, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> okay, good, good. Good. Um, good, good. My chat's just jumped. Uh, we did the the half ET, didn't we? Yep. Um, the box part is either missing, battered, or our stone's missing, and one of the hook has gone. Oh, they're pearl necklaces, and she's got to restring them as well. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Make, you can make little tongues. You can make the tongue clasp that go with it as well. So you can make the ones that do that, can't you? There's a little, little dimple by there. So you can make these. Obviously, this distance has to be able to fit into the little box. Then Are this. they over? Oh, I know the ones you mean, Helen. I think I've got... Hmm. I think I've got one out there. Yeah, so you can make it's, these um, types of clasps, not a problem. No, they're not. Do you want me to get it? No, okay. <laughs> Another one you mean. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's, good, not, good. No, it's, yeah, it's not like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Rebecca, send me, send me a picture and we'll have a look for you. Um, uh, Jane has, oh, no, sorry. Um, Ernestus, um, what tool do you use? What tool you use to do flesh setting? One of our burnishers just been restocked in the shop. We've got ten at the moment at the bench dot store. What tools do you use? So you would use a drill. Okay, this is your cross section through your metal. Okay, this is your cross section through your metal. First of all, you would drill and you drill a hole. It doesn't really matter what size. I would perhaps, it depends on your stone, obviously. If you've got, say, a one millimeter stone, you'd have to have perhaps a half a millimeter hole, really small. If you have, say, a three millimeter stone, about a one millimeter would be just right. So first of all, then you'd need a twist drill. Twist drill. Then what I would do, I would want then to remove and as much metal as I possibly could fast. You don't want to have a setting burr just yet. Why? Because the teeth are close together, they're fine. They will take a, that, that will take a long time to remove metal from your piece of metal here because the teeth are very close. And because of that, it's going to get hot and there's a chance that you can overheat these. And as soon as you've overheated them, and you know that because they change color, you've doubled it and you've got to throw them away. So what I would be inclined to use them would be uh, what is called a bud burr. That's a bit more tapered than that. It's in the shape of a bud. That's why it's called a bud burr, like that. So it's like that. It's that sort of shape. These teeth are a little bit bigger, they're more open, a lot more aggressive. You'll be able to move a lot more metal with that to virtually the right size. So then you're going to have this sort of shape then, this in your hole. So that's what you've taken, okay? Now this diameter here has to be obviously slightly less than your stone. Then what you would do is come along to a setting burr with, say you've got nice straight edges to it, and if you had a uh, three millimeter uh, stone, I would start off with a one millimeter drill, nice and straightforward, a bud burr, perhaps 2.5. So that 2.5 bud burr. So now you've enlarged this to 2.5. And now you can come along with this guy here, and this little guy is going to come down and just cut a little seat like that. And all you gotta do is just remove that little bit of metal. So now you've got that sort of shape all the way along. So that then was gonna be three millimeter. Uh, and the more you use the burrs, the slightly less they become in diameter. So if you've used this, this is a brand new one, and this is three millimeters, and you've used it three or four times, it may come down to roughly around about 2.9 millimeter, which is fine because you wanna have a nice tight fitting uh, stone into the hole. And when you do this, if 
you have a stone that is two millimeters or less, make sure that the table of the stone is level with the metal. If you've got stones two millimeters or bigger, the table can just be above the surface. But as long as you've got a bit of metal on the side here, that's exactly what you're after. Then you get a mini burnisher. There we go, mini burnisher. And then you get the mini burnisher at an angle in this direction. Don't go vertical, because at the moment, vertical is gonna do nothing to it. Bring it in at an angle and burnish the metal. And that will burnish this bit of metal here slightly over the edge of the stone like that. And that will bring that into place like that. So you need a twist drill, bud burrs, setting burrs, straight sided, and a mini burnisher. That's the basic equipment what you need. Okay, Dean is saying, I like the bud burr, but it removes the metal fast. It does. So that's something to be careful of yes, then, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Mm. That's what I would suggest you have, certainly. Mm. Good. Anything to show? Show and tell? No, or, I showed, we them, showed, all. We showed them all. I think I showed them all, okay, yeah. Okay, that's mm. fine. No worries. Good. You made me think I should have saved something there. <laughs> Got another question though. Go on, give okay. us it. Um, Jane is saying, caught up on using rollers and maintenance workshop video over the weekend, which I learned so much on rolling techniques. Good. Nice. Um, I have a bit of rust on the D rollers. Do I still clean using the metal polish? I think you could get some wire wool just to remove a little bit of rust. Wire wool is nice and forgiving. If you start using things like uh, emery paper, it may be a little bit aggressive. Start off with a little bit of wire wool. If you've got some Brillo under your sink that you use to clean your pots and pans, like in the old days, make sure there's no uh, Brillo soapy stuff on it and make sure it's dry. You, but wire wool would be a great thing. If you don't have any wire wool, but then this, you know, this is what I'm doing in here. I'm looking in my tray. Have I got some really, really smooth bits of emery paper? Something like this that is nice and worn. You can use, put your finger on it and just rub the rollers with it. Don't use any water with it. You can use a bit of oil just to go over that little bit of uh, rust. Fingers crossed it's not too much and that little bit of emery paper will just be able just to remove it to bring it back down to its nice and nice and shiny. If you find it has pitted slightly well then get a little bit more emery paper and just go over it a little bit more just to remove that. A fraction isn't going to make any difference uh, of uh, removing the metal and then make sure you oil it afterwards. Okay. Cool. Yes, uh, yep, um, Maria is asking, if you have time, following on from hinges recently, would you do a sideways opening locket, please? Isn't there one on at the bench? Yes, there is. Yes. Is it the Mukumigane one? It is, mm. locket. So just, yeah, if you're a member of at the bench, just search for lockets and there's a catch on there. And yeah, there's another type of catch on the, the like the poison ring as well. But I was like, the figure of eight that was okay. a little bit different but yeah i don't think i'll be doing a film at the moment on lockets but as louise said on at the bench uh, there's the films on the lockets show you how to make the hinge and make the catch on there as well yes Lou. good um jane is saying when i polish with fordham my pieces go black even even when i go through steps with triple e then rouge what am i doing wrong Usually it's because your polish is simply being deposited onto the metal. Got to make sure that the speed is perhaps a little bit faster. Make sure that your mops don't have an awful lot of polish on it. A lot of people will tend to like this with the polish onto the mops and get the mops completely hard and absolutely completely saturated with the polish, whether it be Tripoli or whether it be Menzerna or Lux or whatever you got. But make sure you don't have an awful lot of polish on the mops. A gentle, light stroking movement, really, or back and forth, or whatever you want to use, is all that you need. If you find that the polish is being deposited onto the metal, increase the speed of your motor a little bit, and usually that is good enough just to increase the speed so it whips it off and takes it. Uh, perhaps, perhaps decrease the pressure or increase the pressure to try and see if that will make any difference as well. Try it with a brand new mop. Uh, you know, you, they're, they're pretty cheap mops these days. Um, there's a nice soft woolen mop like this. 
if you put a little bit of rouge on it when you put some rouge onto this it's only really just got to coat this little area the top few fibers don't let the rouge go too deep into the mop you're going to have too much polish on it you just have to have enough just to stroke the metal and increase the speed decrease the pressure increase the pressure vary things like that and you should be fine with that and don't forget before you then go on to using your rouge make sure all that polish is off the metal the triple e is off the metal before you go on to the next a lot of polish you mustn't have cross contamination between triple e and rouge on the piece yes Lee. okay good um scrap over engineering is saying if you still show projects i've uploaded a video on here of a large project i did so many things went wrong it burned me out a bit oh, oh. Um, but the results are very nice. I can send the link. Yeah, please do. And perhaps we can have a look next week. Yeah, please. Love it. Love yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, good. Uh, Helen's saying, thank you. You saved me buying ready textured wire. Back to hammering <laughs> wire. Yes, afraid so. Um, good. So Mike is saying, during lost wax casting, my morals are cracking. Models? Moles? 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 Models? My morals. Morals? <laughs> A typo, I think. Um, can you recommend an investment powder that would withstand the expansion of 3D resin during the burnout process? Repeat that again to me. Sorry. During lost wax casting, are yes. you paying attention? I am, Thank yes. Thank you. Um, my morals are cracking. <laughs> okay. My moulds are cracking. Moulds are cracking. It's going to be moulds, isn't it? Moulds, yes. Yeah. Can you recommend an investment powder that would withstand the expansion of 3D resin during the burnout um, process. Yeah. Now, this, I don't have an awful lot of experience with 3D resins. I um, use, oh, what do I use? I buy my investment powder from Betts, Betts Metal Sales. Oh my gosh, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. I'd have to go and have a look. It's a well-known brand. No, have you got be... you on here? Bets Metal Sales, see what comes up. Investment. That, 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 that's Cooks in your room. Oh. They pay no. for the adverts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a few people do that, don't they? Yes. But yeah, I can't remember what it is. The problem is because there's, there's, there's expansion when it comes to resin. In theory, there shouldn't be that much of an expansion that cracks the... You've got to click accept. Oh. Stupid website. cookies. Okay. That I, I would not have thought the resin that you've got should expand that much that causes Is that it? Uh, gold star yeah gold star xl i think it's not that one but gold star is a really good investment powder to it's use. out of stock <laughs> <laughs> so it must be good yes gold star is good we do use some other bits and pieces i can't remember what it is but i think there must be something wrong with your resins because they should not expand and cause the molds to crack there may be some other reason why your investments are cracking. It may not be the moulds that are doing it. But you perhaps you could search for investment powders to use with resins. But I've never heard of moulds cracking due to the resins expanding. Sorry. Unless so, it is morals. Unless it is morals. <laughs> so, <laughs> another question. Um, uh, Susan said, if you have rouge buildup, use a soapy solution when you buff. It keeps the rouge from building up. I'm still trying to find some emulsion. Yes. This elusive, we need to get in touch with. I think I know what it is. Dio. Yeah, I do. Que de Is that French? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me later. I think it's Vienna Lime. That's what the bag is out there. Vienna Lime. Vienna Lime. Vienna Lime. Lime as in lime, lime juice lime, lime, or yeah. lime as in the nasty lime. Yeah. The nasty lime. No, not, yeah, it's, it's lime, spelled lime as in lime, L-I-M-E. As in the fruit, not yes. the poison. Not the L-Y-M-E. Yeah. No. It's <laughs> lime. I don't, want the, I don't want the bad one. It's Vienna, I'm sure it's Vienna lime. Okay. And I've got a bag out there that I've got to try. I'm going to you, see, have a you mix it with, with water it. then, do you? Yeah, yeah, mix it into a slight slurry. Yes. That is what Sounds emulsion delightful. is. That's what the emulsion is. There is no emulsion. But I suspected it to come in a bottle. Yes, this has emulsion on it. Yeah. Yes. Polishing that's emulsion. <laughs> that's where I've been going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it is Vienna Lime. Very good. Okay. But it says it. I've got to try it and I'm going to report back. Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, let's see. David, do you still do the two raffles each month? 
Um, no one's been collecting them over the last few months. That's the reason why we've got about four or five tools that no one's collected. Mm. Perhaps we should have a big have big, a big raffle off. I think we should. I think we're going to have to do that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, David, for reminding me about yes. that. Because um, no one came forward to collect the Fordham. Yeah, because I remember the last... Yeah, I think I about don't... four or five people have not come forward. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? It is. Why do you think that is then? Do they think it's don't a bit know. spammy? You want to, whatever, something really good? Do they mm, think, no yeah, idea. right. Because we haven't sent hardly any dirt and stuff off. The Fordham's downstairs. Still haven't. Need to get on that then. So yeah, keep a look out. It could be in chance... We're winning something amazing. Okay, we need to sort that out then this week. Yes. Good. Thank you, David. Um, it is morals. Mike, Susan said, Mike, crack morals can only be fixed in church. Oh, it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> wakey, wakey, Louise. Um, okay. <laughs> um, Jack is saying, did you start this practice of dopping based on this experience? Say that again? Dopping or doping? What's that? Repeat Did that? you start this practice this of... Doping? Based on this experience. What experience is that? Um, I think it might be relating to something we were talking about a bit earlier, but I, I'm not Ooh, sure. I don't know. Sorry, Jack, can you put a bit more detail in and then I'll... Yes, let me have a look. Okay. Um, David says, does the assay office still destroy an item that falls below the requirement? No, they don't. They used to, but they Did don't. Did they? Know. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah, but they don't now. They just um, let you know. They won't hallmark it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, it's not their property. Well, I suppose that's why they don't do it anymore. And that, that nails in, that means you can't resell it. Yeah, but you could mix it with 22 to get the carriage up, couldn't you? Yeah, but you have to melt it back down to do that, to take it back up. Right? Yeah, well, that, then yeah. that's up to you to do, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Because mm. otherwise you're going to keep sending them things, but they, nobody's going to keep doing that to them in their right mind. I think they said that I've never had anything come back damaged or ruined or smashed or hammered, nothing like that at all. Because, mm. like you say... Yeah, oh, destroy it and send it back, not just destroy yeah. it and... Oh, no, destroy it and I send see it what back. you mean, yeah. Anyway, no, you, can't, <laughs> you cannot sell this. Cause I just not, thought you no. meant, like, permanently destroy <laughs> 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 Yeah. But I don't think I don't think they've I've never ever seen anyone's piece destroyed. My heart. I've, I've seen a few pictures of like bad hallmarks that in theory have destroyed. Anyway. Have just yeah, they d yeah, they, they don't destroy it, they just send it back and hallmarked. But again, yes. you're wasting your time. Yeah, gotta do it all over again. Yeah. Someone said, Do we advertise the winners? We actually emailed the people. Yeah. Um, we they... emailed one one person several times, didn't oh, we? Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. yeah, they didn't come forward. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I'm not chasing people. If they don't claim the prizes by the end of the month, it'll, it'll just go in, into a pile. Okay, we'll get on to this then. So we will look into that, David. Thank you. Yes. Good. Okay. Um, oh, why does this chat have to jump around? Could be we've only got a chance for one or two more questions because it's nearly five Is it really? Where's this hour gone? Flies by. Um, okay. Delmar is saying, how much should I charge per gram for finished sterling silver jewellery or 925? Then fortunately, there's no way of telling you what you should be charging mm. because it depends. We <coughs> personally would never charge per gram for any finished If it's item. silver, it's going to be, it's not enough anyway, is it? No, because your finishing and manufacturing processes are going to be different for all different types of Silver jewellery. If you it's are, not going to be enough for any metal, but certainly not for silver. Oh my gosh, mm. no. So if you're making a silver ring, it may take you half an hour, and you may charge X amount of, per gram. But if it still takes you half an hour to make a two gram ring, and it takes you half an half an hour to take to make a four gram ring, the pricings are going to be completely different because you can't charge say twenty pound for a, a two gram ring and forty pound for a forty pound ring because the time you've taken is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem you get. So you must never charge per gram for anything. You must work out your costings, exactly what it costs you per hour. Then you work out your costings based upon your expenditure, how much your torches, how much your rent, how much your rates, how much your water, your gas, your electric, consumables. your website, your consumer, everything. Mm -hmm. And we've got a workshop on that on At The Bench, two workshops actually, 
that are like three hours each and we have done a fantastic spreadsheet, haven't we? Yeah, with that. it's an awful lot to factor in, isn't there, really, yeah, with your pricing yeah. and it's, yeah, needs and to be. And prices. now, actually, if you did the pricing workshop and you worked out all your prices, it's probably time to revisit that. It is, because... Because prices of everything have gone up. Energy prices. Energy prices, everything's gone up. So it's time to, to I would say... To revisit your Get charges. back on that, go back to your spreadsheet and... Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah, so unfortunately, it is a very poor way of pricing your work, I'm afraid. So you really need to work it out exactly. You just... Well, I wouldn't say poor. You are just really doing yourself a disservice, aren't you? Yeah, you You're could be undercharging, you could be well overcharging, you mm. could be losing money left. There's no right formula because everybody's different and no. the way everybody works is different. So I know that's not very helpful at all, mm. but you do have to really delve into it and, yeah. and spend yeah. a good few hours. But, well, we, we spent three hours talking about, talking it. about it, didn't we? Yeah. About everything you need to think about. Yeah. So it's probably going to take you at least that if you want to sit down and really Analyze. drill down into it and, and, and get some sort of realistic yes. um, costing. I'm afraid so. Mm. So yeah, unfortunately, not a simple answer. You need to work out your prices. Last question then, Louise. Okay. Um, okay. Um, this is where I'm going to struggle to find a question. Thank you, Gillian. <laughs> Our display is lovely. Louise did it. She's oh, always thank you. Um, yeah, I do like. I do like. Do, I do. I like doing the window sometimes. If I'm not too busy, I like doing the window. Um, Beth's you. saying, thank you, Beth. Thank you, lovely. Anthony says, have you done a training video on brooches and brooch pins? No, but I have got a little, it's a very rough video I took on my phone of you doing a kilt pin. Yes. Which you just literally, you, you, I think it was to send to somebody who was, Want which is, might be helpful. Pin. So are you on Facebook, Anthony? And I will put it on Facebook later or I can email you. I don't know if I can email it actually. No, she should be able to. Is it true the file might be too big? Mm, maybe. Can you suppose to do it? Yep, yep, yep. Dr. What, Louise what's, email. Shall I put it on socials? Just is, it, is it a bit too rough? Yeah, email. Email. Just email. That's I think it's too big, it. but okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, do you want another question? Last one then. Everyone's saying charge 100, uh, 50 to 100 pounds per hour for your time. The lower, the more. Yeah, it, again, Sally, you really do need to make sure that you know exactly what you should be charging because everyone, you know, in this place here, we've got a whole building, we've got staff, we've got teams, we've got a lot of equipment. So our rate per hour is going to be more than somebody who works out of their, um, their local um, craft centre or even perhaps something like the dining room table. So everyone's is going to be different. So yeah, again, just make sure that you do earn enough. Uh, Faye's saying, does the pricing spreadsheet include charges for online shops, i.e. Etsy? It does for galleries, doesn't it? Yes. So we you could probably incorporate percentages. it that way. There yeah. are there is a column for additional charges, isn't there? So you could you could work it in there. Put your Etsy charges in there. Mm. Yes, you do. Yeah, absolutely. So because that does need to all be considered. Yes. Good. Excellent. Should we finish there? I think so. There's still lots and lots of questions coming in, lots of questions being answered. So thank you, everyone, who have been... Oh, it's been... Helena we did the kilt pin video for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit there and make a kilt pin for Helena. And I filmed you, didn't I? Yeah. We did that. <laughs> yeah. Good. <clears throat> everyone, your gems, your stars, thank you very much. It's <laughs> really good to see you all on the Q&A today. So thank you all for that. Um, yeah, we're going to be going now. And yeah. we'll see you next Monday for the next Q&A. We're going to be publishing the days for the next workshops. We're going to, again, going to try and get two in this month. It's going to be another rush to get two in this month. Well, we're, we're looking after your dad as well, aren't we? Because your sister's his yes. main kind of like looker after her. But she's gone on holidays. So for the next few weeks. It's going to be very tough to get it, it in. So It's going to be fine. Oh, it's going to be fine to have, but try and get very workshops positive, in. Very positive, haven't you? Get workshops in as well. It's going to be very difficult, but we will certainly let you know over the next Perhaps few we'll get them on the workshop. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we go up the stairs first. No, oh, no, we won't do that. No, no, no. All right, let's disappear. Um, Susan, you need a 12-hour marathon. You can carry on if you want to run a 12-hour marathon. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. We haven't done a 12-hour for we a did long a three, time. Three-hour workshops are intense, as they are. I'd have to slow down my talking and go really slowly. <laughs> yeah. 
I rush now to get everything done within three hours. We'll have a little think. Yes.、Mm. All right, everyone. Lots of messages coming in. Thank you all for joining us today. Really do appreciate it. Sorry we didn't get round to your questions, but don't forget if you if you just sat there in the car and you just wait in in the traffic jam. Go to your podcast player. Search for Jewelry Talks at the bench. We've done three podcasts so far. We've got <laughs> a few more、um, in the pipeline and loads of more ideas. So go to the go to Apple. If you're on Apple, search for that. So you can get back up to number one. If you're on Spotify, <laughs> just try and get the Spotify charts on Craft as well. So listen to the podcasts. Please. You can listen to Andrew's complaint that he had. I have a, had a complaint to the, the local complaint. business. All, and now we can't return. All true. All true. <laughs> we、and、can I, never I, go back. I did、back. actually shorten that podcast down by about ten minutes because I did <laughs> rant a little bit more than what I should have done, but I cut it down an awful lot. It just gives a good example of how a complaint wasn't resolved. How not to、did、do it. Anyone would the only satisfaction of the business owner. I mean, well, he's lost two、right. customers, two regular customers. So, I, if I was him, I mean, perhaps he's glad to see the back of us. Who knows? Well, of course, we just sat there, ate up, drank up, and disappeared. Well,、it's... yeah, we we were, I thought we were quite good customers. But there we are. He wasn't sad. He wasn't sad to, unless he thinks we're coming back. But we're not bitter, are we? I wanted to go back. That's the sad thing, and we can't now because of you. No, no, I haven't done anything. <laughs> Let's go, Louise. Let's go. Let's go and have our tea. So, everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. Sorry we didn't get around to your questions. Um, hopefully, all the answers that we gave、um, helped you all. That's it. Andrew has too much spare time.、Oof. No, I really don't. <laughs> I can I, assure you, we don't. I really don't. Not <laughs> at all. Oh. No. Good. We'll see you next Monday for the next Q and A. Don't forget, 4 p.m. on Monday, and keep an eye over the next few days on social media for the next workshops. Also, keep an eye on your emails for the links and everything else that we sent out today. Um, appertaining to the last workshop, and if you haven't had it by tomorrow regarding the catches workshop, drop Louise a little email, and she can sort that out for you and get the emails out. All right, everyone, take care. We will see you next week. It's goodbye from Louise. Goodbye, and it's goodbye from Andrew. I was waiting for you to get that. <laughs> everyone, take care. Bye bye.